seven. We're dealing all about chemical formulas. What can anyone give me an example of a chemical formula? Anyone have any idea as to what a chemical formula is? Yeah, Drew. H2O. Yeah, H2O is a chemical formula. Okay, CO2. All of these things are chemical formulas, okay? A chemical formula, your book tells you um, a chemical formula is uh, the relative number of atoms. This is something you should maybe write down. It's the relative number of atoms. in a chemical compound. Why do you think the term relative is important here? Do you know what relative means in this context? Isaac, do you have an idea? Matt, do you have an idea? Mm, not necessarily approximate because chemical compounds have a specific ratio in which they, they bond, okay? So what it means relative is that in every water molecule, there will always be twice as many hydrogen atoms as oxygen atoms, okay? Because that's what this tells us here is this two, okay? So it means if there was three oxygen atoms, there'd have to be six hydrogen atoms to go along with those water molecules, okay? So relative means in comparison to each other, that ratio is locked in, okay? Does that kind of make sense? For every oxygen or for every hydrogen molecule or hydrogen group of molecules, there's always going to be twice as many hydrogen atoms as oxygen atoms. Okay, so that's what that relative means. Okay, so it also tells us that when we're looking at hydrogen or we're looking at water, um, we know there's two hydrogen atoms paired with one oxygen atom, right? Does that make sense? It's also telling us that if we're looking at a mole of water, we have two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen in one mole of a water substance. One mole of water means we have two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. Okay, we can blow that up and make it a little bit bigger scale. So that's what that relative, num relative uh, part of our um, definition means. Okay, so that, that number gives us a little bit more of a reading. Okay, we can look at number of atoms or look at number of moles if we use a little bit bigger scale. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and take out your periodic table and have a look at what valence electrons mean. I want to review the term valence electrons. Do we know what those mean? Yeah, Drew. Electrons on the outer shell. Good. Valence are valence electrons. I will abbreviate valence electrons just like this, VE. Okay, you know that means valence electrons. VE with a little minus. That's what I consider valence electrons. So valence electrons are electrons on the outermost shell of an atom. So if we look at our periodic table, how can we determine the number of valence electrons that a specific atom has? <coughs> Do you remember how we determine it? Yeah, Scott. Isn't that like the number on top of it, like the column? The group number, yeah. Columns, Columns are groups. Good. So if we look at our periodic table here, uh, can I clear this screen off? Yes. All right. If we look at our periodic table, um, we see group numbers here. So this beryllium right here, what group number is it? Group two, so it has two valence electrons. It has two electrons available to bond. Okay, what about nitrogen's group? How many valence electrons does it have? Five. Five valence electrons. Very good. Okay, so I wanted to do a quick review as far as what valence electrons do, what they, um, how we find them. So they're by group number. Okay, and they're the, by, by the group numbers that we established. Okay, so that means that boron is group three, carbon is group four, um, by the group numbers that we established, not that necessarily your book established. Okay? Good with valence electrons? 
Okay. Now I want to take a look at, um, on the periodic table, what an ion is. You remember what an ion is? Yeah, Hannah. And it has like a different number of electrons. Yeah, yeah, good. It has a different number of electrons than it normally would, or it has a charge. Okay, so an ion, an ion is anything with a charge. It could be an element, could be a compound, uh, but it has a charge. Oh, wow, I can't spell compound. Okay, so you guys already know that, but if you want to write it down again, you can. So an ion is anything with a charge. It could be an element, it could be a compound, um, but it's got a charge of some kind. It's not a neutral atom. It's got more electrons than protons or less electrons than protons. Okay, what would happen if I would add protons to an atom? It'd be a different element. Okay, we don't add protons unless we want to bump it to be a different element. If you want to change the charge of something, we manipulate the electrons, not the protons. Okay, the electrons manipulate the charge, not protons. Okay, so we're going to look at on the periodic table um, how we can determine the charge of a particular atom. Okay, so we can think, tell a lot of things from the periodic table. We can tell the number of valence electrons. Uh, we can tell... Um, group numbers like that. We can talk about all different things. We can find its atomic mass, atomic weight, things like that. We're now going to look at what an, atom, what an element's charge is just on the periodic table. Okay, so it follows a pattern just like everything else. Hydrogen's group or group one has a negative one charge. No, I'm sorry, sorry, positive one. Gotcha. Okay, it has a positive one. Beryllium, or group 2, has a positive 2 charge. Then we jump over to boron. Group 3 has a plus 3 charge. So that means all elements in that group or in that row have that same charge. So boron, aluminum, gallium, those all ha have a plus 3 charge. Okay. Now we're going to jump over to helium. What do you think the charge on helium atoms might be? Drew, what do you think? Zero. Why do you think zero? Because all the electrons are full. Yeah, because these noble gases have full shells. They have no electrons available to bond, nor do they want to bond with anyone. Okay, They want to be by themselves. They have no electrons they are willing to share or give away to anyone. So they have a zero. They're a neutral. Fluorine, in that row, the group seven, or the halogens have a negative one charge. Group six has a negative two charge. Group five has a negative three. And then this group right here, group, the carbon group or group four, um, they're a little bit tricky. Most of the time they're plus fours, but they take on some multiple personalities, okay? We don't have a specific rule for them. Most of the time they're plus four, but they can be minus four at times, and they're just kind of tricky, okay? So the other ones are the ones that you'll really, really have to know. Okay, so we determine the charge of an atom just based on its row. Yes? So is it plus four or minus four? Um, yeah, kind of. Yeah. So... What about these transition metals in the middle? How do we find their, how do we know their charge? These transition, hmm? Yeah, they're kind of everywhere. Okay, the transition metals don't follow rules. Okay, they are kind of out on their own. So I have a list for you that I need you to write down of these elements. Um, these elements, some of them in the transition metals, take on more than one charge. They have opportunities to have different charges. So this is a list that I'll have to have you write down, um, and we're going to talk about these more in depth tomorrow, but I want you to have the list down now. Okay, so let's see here. First up is iron. Iron's F plus 2 or a plus 3 charge. Okay.
Okay, so those are the lists of elements that can take on multiple charges. So now, how, now that we know how to identify a, an element's charge, right? Okay, so tell me what the charge of chlorine would be. Minus one. Yes, Matt. Are there any transition We don't deal with them very often. These, the transition metals that I gave you are the ones we'll deal with most often. Okay. Um, what would be the charge of calcium? Plus two. Plus two. Very good. Plus two. Okay. So now that we know how to identify the charge of an atom, we're going to learn how to name them. Okay, we're going to learn how to name the charges. And I want you to turn to um, page 221 and take a look at that table. Do you notice the difference between the positively charged ions and the negatively charged ions, just in terms of their name? Uh, all the negative ones end in I. Yeah, all the negatives ended in I-D-E. Positive ah. Positive, positives don't change their name at all. Okay, so cations. Listen up. What's what's the charge of a cation? They're plus. Okay. That's right. And the anions have what charges? They have negative charges. Cations take on no change in their name. However, when an anion takes on its charge, it changes to ending its name in IDE. Okay, so you need to start realizing there's a difference between chlorine and chloride. Right? What would be the difference in chlorine and chloride? Chloride has a negative one charge. Chlorine is a neutral atom. Where's okay. chloride on here? On what? Yeah, chlorine is just... Chloride and chlorine are the same thing, but chloride is when it takes on that negative one charge. Okay, so chlorine is a chlorine atom that has balanced electrons and protons. Chloride is an atom that has... What do you think? An extra... Or it's missing an electron. It has an extra electron. Okay, so do we see the differences here? Anions end in IDE, cations keep their name the same. All right. Questions about that? So what would be the difference, what would be the charge of phosphide? Negative. Negative what? Negative Look at where three. phosphorus is. Negative three. negative three. Phosphide would be negative three. Okay, do you see why phosphide would be negative three? Phosphorus is right here. Phosphorus is neutral. Phosphorus is just zero. Because it's in this group right here. And it goes negative one. Negative two, oh, negative three. three. No, no, these are zeros. Oh, Neutrals. The noble gases are loners. They don't bond with anybody. Okay? We don't care about the noble gases. Okay? All right. Let's move on. Okay. We're going to look at something we call binary compounds. What, is the, what does the term bi mean? What is the suffix? It means two. Okay, so a binary compound. Binary compounds are um, compounds that are composed of only two elements. Okay, the thing about binary compounds is that they must have a neutral charge. 
they have to have an overall neutral charge. Okay, so that means the cations have to equal out the anions. Okay, we're going to look at combining two elements to form a chemical compound. Okay, so do you think water is an example of a binary compound? Does it contain two different elements? Do the charges of hydrogen balance out the charges of oxygen? Take a look at your periodic table. What are hydrogen's charge? Plus one. And we have two of them, so it's plus one, plus one. And we have oxygen, which is minus two. So together they equal zero. Wait, repeat that. We have two plus one. H2O. H2O is water. We have two hydrogens. Each of them are a plus one, plus one. Then oxygen's minus two. Zero. Yeah. All right. So let's look at some, yeah, yeah, no, they make a zero, no, they make a zero, okay, so listen up, we're going to, we're going to start um, learning how to put these compounds together and learning how to name them, break them down, you guys are going to get really good at this, and this is a skill that you need to start being very good at, okay, so try and keep with me today, try and participate, ask questions if you're not getting it, because this is a skill that will come in very, very, very handy, okay. All right, let's look, at, um, let's look at calcium, and we're going to look at chloride. Okay, calcium and chloride. So first of all, if I tell you I want you to make a compound out of calcium and chloride, you say, okay, you write down their charges. What's the charge of calcium here? Plus two. Plus, Plus two. two. And what's the charge of chloride? Minus, Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Oh, wait. Sure. Do we see where? Oh. Yes. We would never do that. We would never combine that because we don't combine things that aren't ions. We have to combine the ion form. Okay, so we have to take chloride. Okay, because if it's chlorine, then it's neutral, doesn't have any electrons to give up. Right, we don't have any electrons that we want to get rid of. No, you don't change the name of the cation. So cat, this is the plus version, so this does never get its name changed. Okay? So let's look at, hold on, let's look at how we combine these, okay? We need to get these charges to equal out, okay? So how do, how do we go about doing that? Okay, we have a calcium, which is a plus two on this side, and we have a negative one on this side. How do we get those to equal zero? Yeah, I see. CL squared. Not squared. We need, two, we need two chloride ions. Okay, we need two of these chloride ions because that will give us a negative one and another negative one. So it will be written C-A-C-L-2. Two, not squared. Two. Not squared. We put this subscript down here. Remember, the subscript applies only to the atom directly to its left. Okay? How do you feel about that? All right, so here we, all we did here was balance charges. Okay, we have to balance the positives and the negatives. Uh, are we good to try another one? All right, let's look at, let's look at magnesium and sulfide, which is the ion version of sulfur. Okay, don't get don't let that confuse you. That's just so sulfur. Iodide is a thing. Iodide is a thing, yeah. That's weird. Good. Iodide. What about okay. let's look at what are the charges of magnesium? Two. Plus two. Plus two. And what's the charge of sulfur? So does anything need to be done here? No. We combine it and we write it M G S. Okay, so if I want to name this molecule, if I want to name this molecule. The name of it is magnesium, it's because the cation does not change its name. Magnesium sulfide, that's exactly it. Magnesium sulfide, that's it. That's as, that's as tough as it gets, right there. Okay. The thing to remember about these binary compounds is that the cations, cations have to always be listed first. Okay, so that's something that you definitely need to 
know or remember. Okay, cations have to go first. All right. Let's try let's try another one here. What if I have oxide and aluminum? What if I have oxide and aluminum? What are my charges here for oxide? Oxide is minus two. Aluminum is what? Plus three. Okay, learning what talking about what we just learned. Are these in the correct order? No. 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 So let's rewrite here. Aluminum on this side. Oxide on this side. What? I'm going to show you. No. We have to... Listen up, please. This is a good question. We have to make these uh, ratios in whole number forms. So we're going to find kind of the least common multiple of these two charges. Okay, which is what? Six. So right now we have a plus three. That's our first one. And we have a minus two. If we want to get these both to equal like a plus six and a minus six, what do we need to do? Multiply by two and three. We need a, another plus three charge. So we need another aluminum. And we need two more oxides, correct? So I have plus 3, plus 3, which makes a plus 6. I have a minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, which makes a minus 6. Okay, so when I write my finished molecule, it looks like this. A, L, how many of those do I have? 2. 2, O, and then how many of those do I have? 3. So this molecule is called what? What's the name of it? Aluminum oxide. Very good. Wow. Aluminum oxide. Okay. That's it. That's as hard as it gets. Okay. How does that feel? Good. Pretty good. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to make it easier. Okay. We're going to show. We're going to show you how to do it easier. So H2O yeah. like yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you how to make it easier now. So we're going to deal with aluminum oxide again. We know how the finished product turns out. Too much talking. Okay. I'm talking too much. Aluminum is plus three. Oxygen is minus two. Correct? And we want to combine those two things. This is what we do. We drop the signs. We take the three, we move it down here. We take the two, we move it down here. A, L, two, O, three. And we get the correct answer. See? Shortcut. Yeah, it works every time. Yep. All we did was move these numbers down. Okay, it works every time. So let's think about, what was the example that we did first? Tell me the example we did first. C -A -C -A. Calcium and chloride. So calcium was what? Oh, oh, oh. oh my God. All right, all right. You guys are being dramatic. Okay, we did calcium and we did chloride. So CaCl. Okay, so let's look at what we need to do here. We drop the signs. We bring this down. We bring this down. And we get Ca1Cl2. We don't ever write the one subscript, so we just get rid of it. So the numbers are always on the bottom on our final answer? Yes, that's exactly right. Subscripts have to be on the bottom for your final answer. You don't ever have an element squared. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No.